entire Lakeland Union High School community. I welcome each and every one of you to this celebration. Being a high school that recognizes the importance of technology etiquette as an important part of our educational world, I would ask you to please turn off your technology devices right now. Thank you. Those are cool. At this time, would you please stand and face the flag? Gentlemen, remove your hands. As we join the elevator, this man is directed by Mr. William Quicker to the plane of our
hugged us when we experienced failure. And have been trying since September to reignite the fire under our rear ends and asking yourselves, what happened? Your influence on our lives is immeasurable. And this brief mention of your service is in no means thanks enough. Thank you for being our friends, our parents, our mentors, coaches, confidants, and the unwavering strength in our lives. Thank you for being there. To all of the mothers in the audience who did not bring tissue today, I apologize for not saying this earlier. If you were waiting for an appropriate time to go find some, this speech was probably in. The class of 2012, thanks to all of you for being here today. Enjoy the ceremony. We are now faced with the process of letting go and 
as parents it is filled with sadness and joy. These are wonderful young people who sit before us. Please join me in honoring them with a round of applause to recognize the learning and growth they have achieved and that they have earned the right to be here and to graduate. Thank you. 
until all hours of the night is studying Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> Though I've just begun, I know that most of you already have the countdown going until I shut my mouth so we can get out of these uncomfortable gowns and grab the already. So, to everyone here today, I'd just like to say a quick thank you for everything. We really appreciate all that you've done for us, and although we may not say it as often as we should, we would not be here today if not for all of you wonderful people. So on behalf of the entire class of 2012, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for pushing us to do better, to be better, and for picking us up from the fall. It's hard for me to stand up here and address you in the class of 2012 as a whole, because let's face it, we are one of the most diverse classes that I've ever walked, or in Walker McMullen's case, sprinted down the halls here at Lake. <laughs> We all came into this school together as freshmen, not knowing what to expect or even what to do with ourselves. Some of you strutted in confidently on day one, breathed through your freshman year, and blended in perfectly well at this school. Others stepped through the doors and instantly made a mistake that first day, and have proudly stood out among the crowd of friends. Some of you were scared to death and may have even eaten lunch your first day in a bathroom stall, but you still managed to get by. Some of you wanted all the attention in the world, even demanded it, while others walked across quietly, looking down at their feet and trying to stay out of their room. Then there were the kids who got lost on the way to their second hour class and were told by some sweet senior that their room was located on the third floor of this two-story building <laughs> and the new building. But after we all fell into the swing of things, this whole high school deal with cake. Many of us will never forget our first football game as a Lakeview Thunderbird or our first homecoming experience. Ladies, we'll remember the countless hours of preparation we put in and the boys will simply recall rolling out of bed and showing up with pictures. As sophomores, we went through the awkward stage of not really belonging anywhere. We were too big for the little freshmen, but still, still too small to roll with the big dog. We learned how to get by that second year because luckily, Sparkles was there to save us. As juniors, we worked hard in the classroom and did the best we could to beat the seniors at the Powder Puff football game, although the scoreboard did not show it. We couldn't wait to be seniors. We couldn't wait for this day. And as seniors, we owned the school. We pushed through the senior edit that had fall pretty hard early on, took a few personal days, had some late night dates with the work and an excessive amount of caffeine, and worked our tail out to make it here today. Within these walls, we've all grown and changed so much. Despite what we may say, we have learned so much more here than what is printed in our textbook. Actually, I know that there are some of you out there who never flip past the cover of a single book and still make it. And to be honest, I think that you should get a medal for that. In high school, we've made some of the best memories with people we'll never forget. Some were made with people you never would have expected, others that have made the game or musical, and many over the course of a long weekend. We've all done some things we aren't proud of, for sure. We all have regrets. But if you don't do anything stupid while you're young, you'll have no good stories to play your grandchildren when you're old. We've learned how to win and lose here, how to be strong through tough times, and how to ask for help when we don't think we can make it on our own. We've been wrong, we've been right, fallen in and out of love, have had some amazing opportunities, and have made some of the best friends you could ask for. Some of you know exactly what you want and stop at nothing to reach it, while others will let fate take the wheel in your head. Either way, it's up to you. It's difficult to understand the sum of a person's life. Some will tell you it's measured by fate. Some believe it can be measured by the people left behind. Some say it's by love. Other folks say life has no meaning at all. Me? I believe that you define yourself by the people who define themselves by you. This quote from the movie The Bucket List has a great message for from here today. Endeavor to be the person that, you're, that you want your future children to follow. By the end of your journey, everyone who's played a role in your life, and most importantly, the person looking back at you from the mirror, should be able to look you in the eyes and proud of what you can come. Today is where your book begins, and the rest is still unwritten. And tomorrow, We'll all start to write the stories of our lives. And though your story may be very different than that of the person by your side, we'll all have a few things in common. One, we can all agree that this school would not have been the same without Kate patrolling the hallways or Mr. Nielsen spending all of our because someone has been throwing away the fork again. <laughs> Two, we have mastered texting in our desk, in our pockets, in our purses, and in our backpacks without looking. Three, we fully understand that since we live here, tomorrow it may be either 93 from sunny or negative 15 and snowing. And finally, after today, we are all going out into the real world to fight for what we believe in, to struggle a little here and there, and to define ourselves. Live for the moment, laugh until we cry, and love with all we have. Take on this whole world, but
don't ever lose sight of who you are or where you came from. Find whatever it is you're looking for, no matter what it takes. Well, Lakeland, it's been real. We'll never forget you, but we have so much ahead of us. Chances to take, mistakes to make, and a lot of living and learning to do. It's time for us to chase our dreams and figure out what this life is all about. But let's kiss Lakeland goodbye after 2012, because today is the first day of the rest of our lives.
The advice of our graduates, they are smiling today for the last week, is it is the eye which makes the Hawaiian quote from Ralph Waldo myself. With that, our honored faculty speaker today embraces that advice. The seniors have chosen one of their favorite people. Well, I'm not feeling like I'm going to spot that. It's really nice when all the lights were up uh, before, but I guess that's what you get for making a PowerPoint. Thanks for laughing. Um, I'm not much for podiums. I'm not much for formality. Uh, I want to say thanks to, to Frank and to uh, you know, for the excellent job they did of, first of all, welcoming you and then also giving you some, some reflection and some advice on where to go next. Uh, it was pretty intimidating to be chosen uh, to speak here today. Uh, when I, especially when I heard Frank Africano was going to be giving a welcome, uh, a dramatic and comedic thespian master, uh, I was concerned. Then I, I, under the advice of Mr. Boucher, decided that maybe Kaylin and Frank and I should sit down so that we don't, you know, rehash each other's speeches. Kaylin informed us that hers was already written. That was four weeks ago. So I got even more pressure as last night I finished my PowerPoint for today's talk. Um, today I'd like to first of all welcome and thank uh, all of you who have been welcomed and thanked to death uh, for being here because this is a momentous occasion. Uh, but I do want to thank the senior class because it was you who chose me to talk today. And so it's to you that I'm going to talk and, and parents and, and family and community members, I hope that you'll put up with me. Uh, there are two possible outcomes of what's going to happen today. The first of which is, I'm going to see something incredibly moving and powerful which will stick with you for the rest of your lives. And the more likely it is, you'll have no idea what I said. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about how I got here. When informed that I had in fact been voted to be the speaker today, and I gotta give a quick shout out to Mrs. Tyler, who was also one of the fellow nominees, and Mr. Richter in the back, and his job in the band today, he was also one of the nominees. But Mrs. Tyler took it upon herself to campaign for me to be able to speak today because she had no desire whatsoever to be here. I don't think that's a reflection on you, I think that's more a statement of her desire of speaking in public. So when I was informed that this is what I was going to be doing, I, I sat down and I started to, to figure out what I was going to say. And the first thing I came up with was a really neat article in the Wall Street Journal that was written with 10 things that your graduation speaker never told you. And I thought, how awesome. I'm going to inform you of what nobody else will tell you. And as I got into it, I started my list. And I realized that the article I was basing it off of was based on graduates from a college who were much more likely to have had a shared experience and the variety of experiences that you guys have had is immense. And so, as my 10 things came out, I'm like, well, this is only going to apply to some. Then I was like, okay, well, maybe I can put some video with it. It didn't work out. So I went to option number two. <laughs> Let's use a famous quote. I mean, could you just imagine me up here? I have agreed for you. <laughs> That's not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Yeah, it wasn't working for me either. That was a quick one. Uh, the third one, and I strongly encourage you, if you have not, on YouTube, look up something called The Last Election. And it's an amazing, amazing spe uh, speech by a fantastic and amazing man who is in his dying days giving a lecture as a college professor. And the most amazing part is when you get to the end, he informs you that the, the lecture isn't for you. It never was. Despite the fact that it touched you and it opened up this, this huge world to you, he was in fact giving it to his family and to his kids. And I thought, how? Like, all right, watch this. I'm going to be as good as he is. I'm going to give you guys this amazing, fantastic graduation speech. And then I'm going to inform you at the end that it's not for you, it's in fact for my son and Ashley. And then I figured out, like, maybe I want to save that one for a little while. He's only six, I got some time. So, uh, that took option three out of there. Again, I strongly suggest, go and check it out, it's pretty cool. That gave me my, my, my last failure, uh, but remember from failure comes growth. 
I had possibly one of the most moving speeches planned. I had this metaphor, different parts of the body being different things that were going to impact you in your life, your feet, all the places you'll go, they'll take you all over, that's right, you, the Dr. Seuss book that, you know, everybody says at graduation, which I was informed at my son's pre-K graduation, don't get me started, I don't know how you graduate from pre-K when you're just going back to the same place you're graduating from the next day, but at my son's pre-K graduation, I was informed by a teacher from ABW that please don't, when you give your graduation speech, do that. Dr. Seuss sold the place, so that was done. It was out. I mean, the whole thing was written, it was exciting, it was done. No more. So that takes us to today. And I said, all right, <clears throat> what do I do now? I mean, I've, got, I've got like four or five days left, and I've got to come up with something. So the best advice I got, and, and uh, she's here today, so uh, this is Belle Heisen Davey. She said, if you have the opportunity, be yourself. And uh, it's with that idea in mind, hold on just a second, I gotta make sure I put this in the right way, because if I don't have a quick the rest of the PowerPoint's not gonna be very effective. Technical difficulties, right, Mr. I do want to tell you that uh, Frank, uh, Keelan, and myself have been looking at each other through this whole thing. <clears throat> we had a bet at how many times Mr. Boucher was going to talk about technology today. <laughs> I, I think I'm winning. <clears throat> I've said that a lot in the Alright, so, the best place you can get is be yourself. You guys chose me, so my thought was, if we, in fact, were sitting in my classroom, and it was just us, Okay. It'd be really cramped, first of all, and I can see people panning, I'll try to wrap it up, it's coming to an end. Okay. But what would we really talk about if we were sitting in my classroom right now? Well, obviously we'd be talking about movies, because if you've had me, you know that that's true. Uh, the second one, I apologize, it's kind of gross, but it's true. Someone else not, boogers, they, they would make it in the conversation as well. I can tell who's had you because you've been in this one. And the last thing is that little bit of advice that I would want to leave you with before you left. So the first one on the topic is movies. Let's talk about the Avengers graduation. <laughs> one of the problems that I had when I was looking at video clips is I realized that my video clips are dated and it made me feel old, so I was done with video clips. But the Avengers is current, it's now, it's here, you've seen it, you've heard about it. So I decided, okay, how can I buy this a graduation? Well, it's obvious that the graduates are in fact starring as Iron Man and Tony Hawk, or Tony and Stark, sorry. So, uh, why, why would you graduates be Iron Man? Besides the fact that he's flashy and cool. You can see up there, he's cool and stylish. A little bit cocky, uh, hard mistakes. The word I would use now is swag, okay? That's swag. <laughs> he's trying something new in his life. I mean, if you think about where it started, he was a billionaire. He didn't care about anyone but himself, but now he's trying to be a hero. And the last thing, he's a tech wizard. Okay. <laughs> Technology is just like all of you guys are. Okay? That's you guys. On the other side, though, we have parents and guardians. Starring as, that's right, Captain America. <laughs> parents and guardians. Friends and family. Your classic. That's a nice way of saying old. <clears throat> Alright, so, uh, you always know what is right. Do you ever notice that? Whenever you ask parents what their advice is, it's never a question. They just always know. Just like Captain America, he always knows what's right. Moral compass, help me to gain your ground and find your head. And the last part is there. Senior year, you're always battling for control, right? The number of parents that I've had sit down and say, I don't know what to do with this kid. It's somebody who's trying to develop their own identity. Uh, let's not forget the last starring role, which would be me as Thor. <laughs> Rugged and handsome. <laughs> Mythical. Dare I say it? Am I guess it's applicable. I, I was, you know, the other ones would take the whole please. No, that's not me in any way. So, uh, there's your Avengers graduation. It's not, uh, it's running long, guys. I'm sorry. It was really good, though. Sinus infections, like the hard times in life, you know, sometimes you need a doctor that gives you. It was going to be really good, but it's way too long, so I'm sorry about that. Here's the last thing. Here's some advice.
advice for you that I had before I say goodbye and uh, wish you the best if you get your diplomas. Number one, life is pretty simple. It really is. There are some simple things that you can do. People with really good friendships are really happy people who have fulfilling lives. Don't ever forget that. There's going to be all kinds of things that you're asked to do, but please never, never forget to mind your friendships. Okay? Don't neglect them. Make them grow. Number two, realize that wherever you have planned to go is most likely not where you're going to end up. Okay? Even if you believe right now that you're going to swim with dolphins and save the planet, it may not happen. Okay? Even if you think that you're going to be a corporate accountant and make big bang, maybe you'll end up a teacher. Whatever it is that you think you're going may not be where you end up. So don't be afraid of that. Just roll with it. Number three, and those of you who have had and heard the talk, think about what you want your life to be at age 25. Not 18, not 21, but at age 25. And here's the reason why I say that. The smartest people on the planet about what you're going to do that's going to risk your future are the people that insure you. And guess what happens at age 25 to your insurance? It goes down. Wherever you want your life to be at age 25, make your decisions based on that goal. That's the life that you want to protect. Not a year from now, not two years from now. But at that age, what do you want to be doing? Where do you want to be? And who do you want to be? And make your decisions based on that. The third one, or excuse me, the fourth one I just kind of threw on there, uh, I hope that you all understand that if you do make millions of dollars by sitting here today and listening to my speech, you are in fact entering into an agreement, even though you didn't do anything but laugh, <laughs> that now you agree to split it 50-50 with me, should have happened. So I thank you for that. Uh, just feel free to uh, write that check and you can mail it, I'll be surprised, it'll be awesome. The last thing is, uh, I just really truly want to let you know how truly proud I am of all of you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you guys have seen me before, you've seen how honest I am with you, you've seen. Uh, I'm assuming that's a, a big reason of why you chose me to be here today. And uh, you've accomplished a lot. And you're not done. Because I know you guys, and I know what you want to do. And it doesn't matter where it is, in the workplace, in college, uh, graduate school, volunteering, wherever it might be, I know that you're going to do fantastic and wonderful. So thank you for putting in your time. Thank you for being great ambassadors to our community. And thank you for being great kids. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Mr. Bremer. I'll continue to be the straight guy. Just keep on going. Thank you. With the members of the class of 2012, please class. Please allow me to present the class of 2012 to you, the parents, guardians, families, school district officials, and special guests. These young men and women have distinguished themselves by their outstanding performance, by their caring attitudes towards each other and their community, and by their unwavering willingness to rise to many challenges. We have come to respect them and enjoy being with them. We will miss them very much. Dr. Kleinon is at the LUHS School Board. The LUHS Class of 2012 has earned the right to be recognized in our ceremony today. And accordingly, on behalf of the faculty of Lakeland Union High School, many of whom are present at this ceremony today, I hereby certify to the school board that these seniors have successfully completed the requirements of graduation from Lakeland Union High School and have accomplished the identified standards set forth by the Wisconsin Department of Instruction. I recommend them to be granted diplomas. You may be seated.
Touche. It's my honor and a privilege to announce to you the Lakeland Union High School Class of 2012. Frank Nicholas Africano. Kaylin Marie Chiolino. Rihanna Elizabeth Aguado. Nicole Leanne Allen. Jessica Dawn Anderson. Todd Joseph Anderson. Kyle Francis Abazetta. Melissa Jane Baldwin. Justin Tyler Bank. Kirsty Reese Parkman. Brianna Lynn Belfort. Dylan James Bird. Randy Lee Star Big John. Mary May Boudry. Justin Amaya Bond. <laughs> J. E. Boyle. <laughs> Stacy Ann Fitner. Nathan Patrick Chapman. Ted Lee Plow. Justin G. Cobb.
Austin Lucas Don. Anna Eileen Dalton. Kimberly Joanne Delgado. Jerry M. Dern. David Foster Donovan. Elbardo S. Dawes. Caitlin G. Dunbar. Benjamin Mark Durant. Joelle Lynn Edwards. Alexander Jacob Eiselstein. Dylan Coffin Elliott. Justin M. Elsie. Kendra Paige Emmer. Patrick Joseph Fahrenbach.
Jasmine Holly Hosh. Nicholas Stephen Hyatt. Daniel Norbert Gilbert. Adriana Rose Huffman. Brian Kent Ilkes. Kayla 
Sam McIntyre. <laughs> Harmonies, Freedom, Maturity. Douglas Lloyd Malicki. <laughs> Latasha Cheyenne Karmelinski Molson. <laughs> Garrett S. McDaniel. <laughs> Cynthia. J. McDonald. <laughs> Abigail Marie McEnroe. <laughs> Alexander James McGinnis. Walker Nuola McMullen. George, 
Thomas Armstrong Poupart. Edward E. Quaddy. Terry Lee Quinn. Duncan Matthew Reynolds. Stephen Joshua Rowe. Nick J. Samster.
Dennis M. Turney. Randy Justin Awam. Samantha Jean Van Antwerpen. Taylor John Van
Yeah, Kyle. That's my first. Yeah, Frank. Woo. 